Hey guys, welcome to Wrestle In. I'm Kieran, and I couldn't be happier because I'm joined by one of my favorite wrestlers. He's an unsung hero in New Japan, one of the busiest men in pro wrestling, a wrestler, commentator, a manager, a hip hop music maker. He's working backstage, a record holding eight time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion, the former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion as Black Tiger, the King of Sneaky Style himself, Rocky Romero. What's going on? It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, Rocky. Of course, we need to kick things off with the unforgettable Wrestle Kingdom 15. You made your way back to Japan. It was probably your longest break in 10, maybe 15 years from the country. How was it going back? You know, I, it's been weird to be away from Japan this long. Like you said, yeah, it's probably at least been 15 years or so that I've had a break this long for sure. Um, I think probably the longest one I had was maybe, I don't know if I was either... It could be around 2007 or eight or something like that. But um, so it was just, it was it was refreshing to, you know, go through the ritual of, you know, going to the airport, checking in and doing the whole thing and, you know, going to the lounge like, like I like to because, you know, as you know, I have a million miles plus, <laughs> you know, from going back and forth for so many years. So uh, just kind of doing that, it, it started to feel familiar again. And then actually getting into the country was just different because, you know, there's a PCR test when you land and there's, you go in, uh, you know, you're spit into this little tube, you know, you have to wait for the results about, an, you know, an hour and a half or two hours, depending on how busy it is. And, you know, it is the holiday season. So a lot of people were traveling back uh, home, you know. Uh, so it was just a little strange. And then finally, when it got through and it was like, whoa. I'm here, <laughs> you know, I'm back. So two weeks early, but I'm back because, uh, the, you know, the two week quarantine. Uh, so that was interesting. You know, I didn't mind it so much because, you know, even though it's been such a crazy year and I, I, I wasn't going back and forth from Japan, you know, I was really busy with talking shop stuff, you know, the podcast that kind of took off and everything that was, you know, talking shop of mania. And then, uh, when we started new Japan strong, you know, started to get busy with that. So, uh, you know, it, it, it really never stopped, you know, besides that, that first like uh, two or three months when everybody didn't know what was going to happen in the world, you know. So, uh, you know, it was refreshing to have those two weeks to just kind of get back into, you know, wrestling mode, it felt like, you know, and kind of get back into the swing of like New Japan. So, you know, catching up on uh, stuff that I missed during the tag league and the super junior and, and just kind of getting back into like, okay, now we're, we're going to do this you know, big old show, you know, that, you know, that's such a staple for us. Uh, you know, I wanted to be prepped and ready and, you know, give the best performance that I could, you know? Yeah, of course. Like that's all commentary. And then you know, stepped into the ring again for the, in the Tokyo Dome for the first time in a good few years, because you've been ringside yeah. the show and you're, of course, the last uh, two or three. How was it actually getting back in the ring inside the Tokyo Dome? It felt good. I was so tired immediately. <laughs> <laughs> first the jog to the ring, because I, I saw everybody walking and I was like, Oh, man, I'm like on a walk. That's weird. You know, like it, it, it's one thing if you're walking down the ramp, but like, you know, walking all the way and, you know, and I've seen like my chaos guys getting their asses kicked. So I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta get out there. But then when I got out there, I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. Like, <laughs> I think just with the nerves of not wrestling in the Tokyo Dome for years, you know, a few years now, and then being back in Japan, you know, it being the Tokyo Dome that I'm coming back to. I think it just the nerves kind of got to me as well, you know. So uh, just kind of getting in there, I, got, I slid into the ring. I was like, oh, my God, my legs feel like jelly. What do I do right now? You know, so. Uh, but then I started to feel good, started to warm up a little bit and started to, to get going and cooking a little bit. And then it felt good. Um, and then going into New Year's Dash, you know, it felt really good to be in there, uh, especially with, you know, the LIJ guys who, you know, are, are just really, really freaking awesome so it, it good to be back on that level you know again you know you say about that run poor show had to run as fast as he could to come save you from Dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but he's been wrestling full time this whole time he was fine he's a machine <laughs> that, um the venue you was in for uh new year's dash was amazing it looked so cool inside there yeah that was the first time i've ever wrestled it in the uh tokyo Dome city hall i think i had another name before like cork and something at one time i don't know what it was but um I, they, they do like a lot of uh, like boy bands, like they, they do that venue a lot and not so much, you know, New Japan uh, or, or really much wrestling there. I think they might do some kickboxing there, um, but really cool. I've always wanted to go and, and be a part of that. So 
you know, I pass by every day that I'm, you know, in Japan, staying at the Tokyo Dome Hotel for all these years. I go by it all the time. And I'm like, I wonder if I'll ever do that venue, <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden when I got announced, I was like, oh, that's cool. I finally get to see what that's like inside. And it's, it's a really neat theater. Really, really neat. And uh, I hope we do it more often because uh, especially once, uh, you know, fans are able to make noise, I think the acoustics in there are going to be really sick, you know? So I, I would love to to wrestle some, you know, some kind of cool match there. Yeah, it's funny you say that, because I've been to a few Wrestle Kingdoms myself, and, I, you know, you got the famous TGIs, and I didn't realise Corey Quinn was literally above it. But right. I thought, yeah, right. I didn't realise it was just up a lift. It's crazy. It's the famous uh, TGI Fridays that the the Young Bucks and <laughs> Badass Masa made famous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of Wrestle Kingdom, of course, the Bushi, you can't not talk about Bushi going to God, I read, uh, becoming God, I should say. Uh, I read your interview with Sports Illustrated and you said how it was really emotional and, you know, the feelings. And obviously you got a bit choked up along with Chris Charlton. Can you just talk about why that was such a special occasion? I think, you know, I, I completely understand where Ibushi's come from. You know, like we, I, I, you know, I, in the same fact that like I didn't start in a big company, a small, you know, I started in a very tiny company. You know, my first match was in, it, it was in a Mexican uh, restaurant in front of 30 people, 10 people were my family. Like I would say that, but it's the truth. It was, you know, and, uh, you know, to be, you know, I understand to be where we are now. I understand that, but to be where he is now and, and really to have to, you know, that long, long journey, you know, we're, we're about the same age, about 38 years old, you know, so like to that long, long journey to this pinnacle, you know, this moment where, you know, that's all he's wanted to be, you know, that's all he's wanted to be was IWGP heavyweight champion, you know, be in the main event of the Tokyo Dome, you know, uh, you know, sir, you know, thinking he always wanted to be where, you know, Nakamura and Tanahashi were, and here he was doing what they did. You know, I think it was very, it's just a big moment. And, and I think you could feel it. And even though I, you know, I, last year was, you know, Naito's, you know, finally getting the retribution for, you know, hit for his, you know, life and character you know and, and how deep that that really goes that story yeah i didn't feel as connected to it as as i felt like you know because naito had been there you know he, he he did win the championship he did have these you know a few of these moments it was more for him but i feel like for like for me i could really uh just relate more to to ibushi and what he had gone through and what he's been through the last couple of years and you know the injuries and and certain things and like for him to just to have it and then especially storyline wise he got it and it got taken away then he got a, he got another opportunity and then now he had to you know really beat the biggest rival you know who, who's always kind of been one step ahead of him you know in, in jay white and then jay white just has this incredible performance you know <laughs> and then it's like you you thought so many times that ah he's it's it's probably not going to happen and I was teetering tottering back with the, you know the rest of the fans and you know the emotional strings that were being pulled so it was just a cool moment and and uh, I feel like it, you know it's it was such a long story and such a long climb for him to get there that uh, I think we and then especially I think the timing of what's going on in the world had so much to do with it more it just made it more you know even more heavy and more impactful. And, uh, and it was just like, you know, this bright shining light through all this darkness, you know, and it was like, here he is, you know, there's this Ibushi, our champ, you know, I think it's really cool. Yeah. You know? Well, how got Ibushi. Um, yeah. <laughs> saying about having, having to catch up on everything you missed, obviously. I love the dynamic you've got on commentary. You know, you've got Kevin running things. He gets all his stats. Chris Charlton's a human encyclopedia. Gino Gambino's got that banter. And I love how you bring like a seriousness to it. You've got the banter as well, but it's like in the main event with Ibushi Naito, you said this is getting dangerous now. I'm getting scared. Sorry, this is my, these are my dogs. These are my dogs that wanted to be on G1 commentary last time too. <laughs> Children, <laughs> relax. So, sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry yeah, you're saying. In the main event with uh, Naito Ibushi, you said how this is starting to get dangerous now and you're getting scared. Yeah, and that like impacts a lot more than say if Kevin yeah. Kelly or Chris Charlton said that because you've been in the ring. So for you to get scared, it's kind of like, well, hold on, shit's getting real. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, I, 
I, scary. <laughs> well, go yeah, ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I feel like there was something else you wanted to say. There. No, yeah. Um, is that by design? Like, you know, you go in saying, I want to hit these marks, or is it just fluid for you? No, I don't know what I'm going to say. I've, <laughs> I've never, I've never planned anything really besides, I mean, you know, like Kevin might give me a note somewhere here and there like oh you should probably get into this and how you feel at some point he might ask me the question sometimes you know but for the most part you know i'm just out there feeling with you know with the with the rest of, with everybody else you know so uh and i think that that's the most organic and best way to do it you know as a, as a commentator for me at least that's i think works for me as a wrestler right because i do know what it's like to be in there I do know those situations. I do know what's running through your mind. Every time you go to do a springboard, you're like, God, I hope I don't fall. <laughs> you know, or like, or like, I'm or like running in the ring, you're like, my legs are so tired, or like whatever. Like you get kicked in the leg, and then all of a sudden you're like, your leg isn't working the way that it's supposed to. And you're just like, oh, what is gonna happen right now? Like, what, like how and then or or somebody picks you up and there's nothing you can do. You're in, you know, like they're holding you up and they're on the, uh, on the apron and you're just hoping to God, like you don't get dropped on your head and die, you know, like, I mean, that's, that's the truth, you know? Yeah. So I feel like, uh, you know, I just try to put myself I I where Ibushi and Naito are, you know? And I think that that's the best way to do it. I just try to put myself like in that danger of knowing that feeling and knowing what's going through your head and trying to, uh, explain that to the folks watching at home, you know, in, in the best way possible, you know? Like the rig's like doctor literally came out of nowhere. He, he came and sat down and, and Kevin is like points at him. I'm like, Oh shit. The rig's like doctor just came out. That's not good news. You know, like these two crazy mofos are about to kill themselves you know, yeah, for exactly. sure. You know, we, we've seen it before so many times. So oh. I, I just try to, uh, to just be honest, you know, and, and just be uh, observant uh, and, and try to put that my heart, into where their heart would be and like what their mind and what could be going through their mind right now, you know? So. Yeah, no, that definitely comes across. It. <laughs> it definitely yeah. comes across. It's such a good, uh, a good table you guys got there. But any combination of you, it always works. I love it so much. Thank it's you. Been, thank uh, you. It's been disappointing that you haven't been able to do it a whole year. Of course, you've done some uh, later, but nothing right. live. Uh, yeah, I'll no, yeah, and live is so different, and it felt so good to be back out there, like, doing it live. It's so different than, uh, you know, obviously doing it. I mean, it's nice doing it from my home, you know, but it's just not the same energy, you know. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about your match with Rapongi 3K and Mega Coaches, Coroquen Hall, last February, for the tag titles. I think it's easily the best junior tag title match in recent memory, a good few years. I'd have to go back a long time, I think, to find anything better. Um a surefire candidate for match of the year contender for me it was. Uh, obviously, you've got, you know, you and Scucci as the masters versus the students. And it went, like, over 26 minutes long. I don't know if you know this. It's the longest junior tag title match in over 17 years. Oh, wow. I you have know. to go back to Liga challenging for the titles. Um, can you speak to me about that match? Is it a match that you went into knowing we're going to have something special here? Or was it, no, no, no how do you feel about it now looking back? Man, um, let me try to remember. I mean, it, that was like the last mat, one of like the last matches I think I had in Japan yeah, before February all this stuff. Yeah, if, it seems like it seems so foreign, <laughs> like in so long ago. Um, we had a match during the junior tag, right? Yeah, that was want. right, which which I had pinned show, and that one was a banger too. Like that one was like a, a really great match. So I think that. Kind of playing off the emotions of that what happened in that match and, and and kind of you know the the student had to beat the teacher right but the teacher still had some tricks you know up his sleeve type thing and then especially with taguchi you know he's a wild man you know so uh um i just remember like not i don't think it, it wasn't on purpose like to to i don't think go 26 minutes i think it just kind of happened you know, like, like naturally, like in the fact that I think everybody was excited to have the match, A, because we don't get to normally wrestle each other. You know, we're always on the same team. So when, you, when wrestlers kind of have a, a, that, that, um, that relationship with each other and, and you don't get to do it often, 
you get excited, you know, and I think that all four of us were very excited for it, for it to go hard. And, and then I think like, for me being, you know, that kind of that staple in the junior tag division for so long, I wanted to, you know, and stepping back into it, especially for a championship, I, I wanted to make sure that I brought it and, and people, you know, like, I don't want people to talk about the me in the junior t- tag division and be like, I, that was just like a whatever time, you know, or whatever. Like, I want people to be like, oh shit, I remember Rapungi Vice versus Young Bucks or, you know, whatever, Young Rapungi Vice versus, you know, Red Dragon or whatever, or Forever Hooligans versus whatever, Liger, Tiger or something. But I, I, like, I want them to, every time I step back into the ring, especially for that, it needs to be something extremely special. And if it's not, then it's not worth doing, you know? And, and I don't want, that to be my legacy like every time if i do do it it needs to be it needs to be a fucking banger it has to be you know otherwise then i wouldn't be me then what, what is my legacy you know and i mean i'm not I, i'm not going to be the guy who's going to carry the torch into the tokyo dome like ibushi so a little <laughs> thing that i can add, i better hold on to it you know <laughs> yeah i mean you say that obviously lots of recent fans i know you said this yourself might not realize a, that you're a wrestler, but B, just how good of a wrestler you are and how much of a Hall of Fame worthy career you've had. Um, you know, that you are this record holding junior tag champion and that you have held the junior heavyweight title. Um, you know, and the best of super juniors in 2019, people have really forgotten that. And then you put on that obviously unforgettable match with El Fantasma as the main one, but also a banger with Will Ospreay. And it kind of either reminded people that Rocky Romero is actually fucking awesome. Or for newer fans, it was like, oh, wow, this commentator is actually an amazing wrestler as well. Right. One thing I'm really waiting for is for you to hope, at least challenge, but hopefully win the title, as the junior heavyweight title, as Rocky Romero. I think Rocky Romero needs to go down in the history books as holding that title. And I know that's something you're keen on yourself. Have you got any sneaky style plans to be challenging for that title? Man, this pandemic really fucked it all. You know, I feel like I, th- I feel like the momentum that I was just starting to make, uh, and and the the noise that I was just starting to make. Obviously, you know, it started at Best of Super Junior twenty nineteen. I think it carried on into the Super Junior tag with Taguchi. Right, people got excited yeah. going into Show and Yo, and then it's just like the rug just getting pulled out from under you. So, I feel like uh, I have to start back over uh, going into this year. And it might be a little tough, obviously, with with stuff that's going on right now. So, uh, I'm, I'm my my goal right now is is Super Junior 2021. I have to probably I gotta I gotta start over and I gotta show everybody that I, I still have it. So I'm gonna take this time to truly prepare. I'm gonna take uh you know each match at strong, and, and truly prepare to kind of build build those building blocks back up. Because to be honest. You know, I got a little heavier during this uh, this time. You know, I put on ten pounds that I probably I don't need. You know, at my age, and um, so uh, you know, I got to kind of rebuild myself. But uh, and that's kind of the mental challenge because it's me. That's the biggest challenge that I have going forward into this. It's myself. You know, because now at this point, I feel like people are going to talk. But now I I raised the bar so high. Now <laughs> I've really got to like figure out how I'm going to break it. You know, so I just got to I got to have the preparation for so. I'm going to go into the LA dojo. I'm going to really hit it hard. That's my, that's my plan. That's, that's part one. And then part two would be, you know, uh, really showing up and then, you know, having big matches and hopefully new Japan will have some trust in me to have a main event, you know, at a cork and again, or something like that. You know, I feel like a track record, it could be proven enough. You know, I had a really great match with Jay white last year at strong, um, you know, that, that was a banger. So I feel I'm in front of no people. So I feel like, uh, if they can trust me to, to do that one or two more times on that tour, then, then I'll get there. And then I have to win this belt before 40. That's that, that's, that's gotta be the goal. So I have two years to, to win this belt. You know, uh, I just turned 38 in, in October and this pandemic is, is really right on my butt. So I, I got to win it before 40. And I feel like that will be my motivation for the super junior. And I feel like that will have to be my story for the super junior. You know, like if I, if I can win the super junior, I get a guaranteed title shot. Right. But if I so happen to be in a block, maybe and get lucky to be in with the champion, maybe that's a second opportunity. So I just, 
I don't know. Well, we'll see that, but I feel like that's, that's, that's what I want at least, you know, and that's what I'm going to be talking about from now until, until the best super junior for sure. I agree, man. I think it's a money match between you and Hiromi for the title. Uh, I mean, I, I had a quick check. You haven't faced him since he returned from excursion in a singles match, you know, yeah. new Japan loved that. Those first encounters, you know, Naito and Ibushi were kept away from each other for almost over a year going into this Wrestle Kingdom. And you stepping into the Hiromu would absolutely die minds, I think. Me versus Hiromu in a main event at Korokin would blow people's minds, I think. And I think also it might be one of the only times that maybe I could take the crowd away from, or like somebody could take the crowd away from Hiromu. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd be such an underdog, obviously. But there's just that little glimmer of hope because of the El Phantasma match that maybe I could pull something out, you know? So uh, I, I, we'll see. We'll see as we get closer to the Super Junior. Hopefully that will be uh, be something, you know? I think the Corican crowd love you as well. You seem to have a real connection with them compared to anywhere else. It's always amazing whenever you hit the ring there. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I love the I love that crowd so much, so much. Uh, speaking on New Japan Strong, obviously the episode that just took place was a huge way to kick off 2020. You had a... Uh, Kevin Knight made his strong debut. Uh, you picked up a win over DKC, and then Shibata invited DKC into the LA Dojo. And then the big one is that uh, Dirty Chris Dickinson is a member of New Japan Strong. That was a, a huge, a huge groundbreaking thing for him to be uh, joining Team Filthy. Can you speak about Chris Dickinson joining New Japan? Yeah, I'm excited to face him. You know, at some point, I would love to because uh, I think he. I think there's, you know, there's something special about him. I feel like I, I like him too because his path hasn't been easy. It's much like an Ibushi's path or or a path like like mine, you know, but even more probably for like an Ibushi where like, you know, it hasn't, it, you know, he's really had to climb the ladder, you know, and making like very small incremental steps, just being like, a, you know, an indie guy or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So like, he, you know, him being a part of New Japan Strong, I know that him personally he really wants to be uh you know wrestling for new japan in japan and stuff so like this could be a great opportunity for him to show what he's all about and possibly get there you know so um and he looks great i i, I loved that he came out in the uh in the uh to, in the takata gear oh, which was yeah. kind of yeah. yeah the purple which is really cool you know for for us uwf fans and <laughs> and uh uh uwf fans so um, I thought that was really cool, unique, and there's something throwback about him. I still think that there's a lot of holes in his game, but I think that him being a part of New Japan is going to get him really to another level if he really wants it, you know? So I, I think that sometimes when guys come to New Japan, their uh, their wrestling just gets, like, so much better, you know, the more time that they spend there. So uh, he's already in, in amazing shape. He He's already got an interesting... Uh, you know, character traits that of uh, that are about him that are that are different, and um, you know, I, I'm really curious to see how he grows on New Japan Strong, and then hopefully uh, he'll do well and and he'll move on to uh, to Japan at some time. You know, uh, that was going to be my next question. Is there hopes that some of these guys that are on Strong, you know, like you've got Team Filthy mainly, uh, will they get their chance in Japan, whether it be in a tournament or is it kind of with Gonna make New Japan strong and main staple of New Japan. You know, I, it's hard to say because right now, just kind of everything the way it is. But I, I think that the hope would be, uh, obviously, with strong would be the step to go to Japan, right? Like to find the talent, uh, you know, let them get, uh, you know, used to, you know, and acclimate to the New Japan system in these type of matches, let them get better, sharpen their skills and introduce them to the audience in a, in a, in a, in a you know, in a, in a really cool way. Uh, you know, especially the Japanese audience who, who really watch us strong religiously. So I feel like um, it's a great way to introduce them. And they, as they start to figure out who their favorite wrestlers are, and then that, you know, basically they're very, audible about who they want to see and you know if 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 that so happens to be the way and when things open up why couldn't those people tr you know transition from strong to you know the main roster you know so i think like almost strong has kind of become kind of like what nxt was you know or maybe kind of is oh, now no. you know yeah kind of like a development place for 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 uh you know 
uh, wrestlers that are, you know, outside of the U S and it's, you know, and what's cool about it is it's a completely U S made show, you know, which is very different from, uh, you know, the Japanese shows What you know, it's, it's produced in the U S with U S wrestlers, you know, any Japanese who co you know, who come over or whatever would be just a highlight, you know, and a bonus, you know? So I, I think it's kind of cool. And, um, I hope that more people will start watching, uh, especially as it grows. And I think like this year, um, you know, starting off hot like that was, was really cool. So there's, a, I think that over the next couple of weeks, there's all going to be a lot to unpack and I, I hope people will, uh, it, it'll, it'll just raise the, the, um, just raise like the attention to, to new Japan strong, which, um, uh, it's great, you know, because I'm featured on it now. So <laughs> I'm not going to Japan a lot right now. So, <laughs> um, so speaking of obviously New Japan Strong in the USA, uh, New Japan have said there's going to be a TV deal with UK and USA. Is there anything you can say about that at all? I have no idea. <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know. But um, whatever it is, it sounds cool, you know, and I, I'm, I'm happy that, uh, I mean, obviously not being on TV in, in the States, uh, for however as long it's been a year or whatever year and a half or two years I'm not really sure but uh, you know obviously I feel like it's hurt the profile of New Japan a little bit you know within the states because you know obviously with the you know AEW coming it was like oh how can we easily watch New Japan you know just on the TV flip it on and then there it is you know so I feel like that's kind of hurt you know New Japan world still as it gets better it's still not exactly where it needs to be you know and then that's just the truth so um as as that gets better slowly uh you know hope you know it kind of needs we need to have that option of just something that's easy to watch so that, as long as it's easy to watch and people can tune in easily yeah. great you know <laughs> so that i think that's just good for new japan especially this year uh starting off so great you know i think last year was very difficult for new japan in so many ways with, with the um with the COVID situation, you know, obviously like it, whatever ideas and things that, you know, they were probably going to do kind of like just everything got just screwed up, you know? And, uh, but also in that there was some really great things that happened. Like you saw Despy and Sho and Shingo really step up to the plate. Um, and, you know, and all these different like new players that maybe wouldn't have got the same opportunities if the world was opened up. So there's good and bad, you know? And I think that, uh, 2020 will be that rebuilding period that New Japan really needed to do and focus on so that 2021 is just going to be, you know, hitting them out of the park here and there, you know, like, like really, uh, I think it'll be a, a, a big year for New Japan growth wise and hopefully internationally. And if there's international TV of some sort, then that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, that's exactly what I think New Japan needs. And especially with somebody like Kota Ibushi at the helm, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, we've never had New Japan on TV over here in the UK, so the prospects of being able to flip on my TV to <sighs> have it on I, is that's, insane. That's where I want us to be so bad as the UK on TV, on free TV or somewhere, I think. If anybody's out there who knows somebody, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> because uh, I, I do think New Japan would do well. I mean, really, really do business like like uh, in the UK. There's such a great market for it. And, and the fans of the UK, they love wrestling and they love wrestling like new japan like that that's you know there, there's such a great market for it as you could see a couple of years ago when we went to to london so and that was one of my favorite trips you know and and i, I too bad you know 20, 2020 sucked so <laughs> you know we weren't able to come back but i i think definitely that will be the you know one of the places that we tour uh you know at least yearly at least you know i think that's we okay. could do twice a year there and and it'd be awesome you know bring that high level you know um you know wrestle kingdom style show there you know why not uh, that's the dream for me it'll save me a good few thousand quid i won't have to go to japan if you guys come here yeah i see your collection <laughs> of uh of towels uh, yeah have, have that, are those did you get those all in japan yeah or? so i went uh g125 and then wrestle kingdom 12 13 14 nice and i'm very glad that i couldn't be there to see abushi win the big one but yeah it is yeah, hopefully it's. uh yeah 2022 you'll be there live and in person Oh, yeah, if I can, I will be. Um, yeah. Switching gears entirely, mentioned at the top of the uh, interview, you obviously make your hip-hop tracks as well. You can listen to them on Spotify, just search Rocky Romero. In 2020, you released two songs with Glass, Someday and Rolly. 
is there plans for more music in 2021 yeah i have like three song or two or three songs that that we have that um i need to go back and, and just kind of finish up some some little details but i have um i got a, a great song with uh with trey miguel that i want to put out and uh and uh i think people really like that and it's something cool it's kind of a take off of um off of t-shirt trap kind of t-shirt trap too so i think that'll be fun and then um but yeah i should probably put it out before he signs somewhere but then, <laughs> then it's a problem so uh so i'll probably put that out pretty soon maybe even this month and then uh, a couple more songs with glass i we wanted to create a whole ep so there might be a couple more songs and then we'll probably put them all into a collection of some kind of sort and then I think this year I, I'll probably either do Sneaky Style 2 or a brand new album, but I'm, I'm feeling like it's going to be Sneaky Style 2. So you may be getting new Rocky Romero music or, and, and you may be getting a new Rocky Romero theme song, uh, mm -hmm. maybe just in time for Super Junior. I think that that would be the play and how to, how to make it work <laughs> entirely, you know? So, so we'll see. We'll oh, see. Yeah. The next couple of months, uh, that's, that's my plan. We'll see if I get to it I, <laughs> busier than ever. So it seems like, but like, uh, uh, that's something that I would really, really love to do. Oh, hell yeah. That's awesome. I can't wait for that, man. Um, yeah. Speaking of music, obviously, like you said, you sing your own theme music. You do it for Show and Yo 2, Rapongi 3K. Which other wrestler do you think should sing their own entrance song? Whether you want to be serious or not. Juice Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he's a good singer, but I think it fits his character perfectly. You know, uh, I, like I think that that would be good. All right, I've got a, a quick question for you then. Juice Robinson's theme song. What do you think the opening words are? Because nobody knows. Lots of people say it's "ass, ass, feet, feet." <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like I've asked him that like twice. Like, what is your music <laughs> saying? He's like. I don't know. <laughs> it's like my goal sure. is to interview Juice Robinson one day, just so I can ask him that question. He probably doesn't know either, <laughs> to be honest. No, <laughs> oh, I think they just gave it to him. He was like, "Yeah, that sounds fine." Was, <laughs> you probably didn't think about it. And he's just like, "Fuck, I need to get rid of this <laughs> theme song now." All right. Um, are there any plans for a talking shop mania three? Yes. Yeah. Yes. There might be a 2.5 in between three because I think three would be cool to try to do it with some kind of fans. So I think 2.5 might be the way to go to hold people over until we can actually do three, like really cool, you know? So um, my hope is to do 2.5 and, and make it the biggest cinematic match in history. That's, <laughs> that's what I want to do. Was the one in two not big enough with Chief Evolution or Chavo Guerrero and I want to do the biggest one possible. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, as COVID cases go up, it, it makes it a little difficult. But I think uh, we just we just recorded again for the first time uh, yesterday. So uh, now we're kind of kind of getting to the back and back into the swing of things and, and figure out scheduling wise and what we want to do exactly and st maybe start writing uh, two point five to hold us over till till we can do three uh, with an actual audience. You know, that'd be awesome. Um, do will we ever see the return of the Okada Cruz? God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> he got his his boat license, so and and I don't think he's used it since. So I feel like we have to do it, uh, man. So I mean, hopefully this summer or you know whatever it is. If 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 I'm in Japan, I, I I'm definitely gonna ask Okada, can we do the boat cruise? Again, please, you know, the Okada Cruise. And may, I don't know who we'll bring, maybe Show and Yo or something like that would be fun. Um, and yeah, but I mean, it was really cool. So like, the, I mean, the story is Okada got his boat license. He's like, oh, meet me here on whatever day it was. And then, so I, you know, we met him there, him, uh, Trent and Chuck and, uh, and I, and then we were like, whoa, this is going to be awesome. And he just rent, you know, he rented this boat and then we just went around Tokyo Bay was amazing. It was really, really cool. It was really, really amazing. So, uh, one of one of my best memories, definitely in Japan. It was a really fun day, as you guys could see when we were posting it, and everybody was going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can't wait to do. It. And that was his idea. He just showed up with that pirate hat. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's what got it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I hope we can do it again for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it. you'll be able to answer this one. Who is your favorite son, Shao Yo? Uh, <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> All right. Um, so we've got AEW guys in Impact, Impact guys in AEW, Impact guys in New Japan. Does that mean we can get Rocky Romero versus Lance Archer in the cage match? Oh, shit. Lance would love that. Man, <laughs> I got to get paid a lot of money to get thrown around by Lance. <laughs> Hurts so bad. So I have to get paid a lot. So if somebody's willing to pay for it, I might do it. So, you know, I I'd like to buy a house. So that would help. <laughs> I'll see if I can set up a go fund me. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, there's a GoFundMe that somebody wants to start. So that I will wrestle Lance Archer, and just in case I get hurt and I won't be able to wrestle for a while, that would be awesome to have that little extra cash. So that's the only way I think I should do it. <laughs> You've come up with an amazing idea. I think that that's the only way I should do it. Usually, it happens like the injury happens after, and then everybody, you know, somebody asks for money. But let's just do it Prepare beforehand. In yeah, in advance, insurance policy, and that's the way to do it. Okay. Uh, why do you hate Bushi so much? Man. Well, <laughs> it, it goes back. You know, it goes back uh, to years ago when, you know, it wasn't my choice, you know, like to for where my sp spot on the card is, you know. It's not like it's up to me. But, um, we, you know, the junior tag opening, I think he was jealous that the, that he wasn't being featured, right? So he took a shot at like the guys who were being featured in the junior tag, who were the opener of Tokyo Dome and, and junior tag has been the opener of Tokyo Dome for so many years, you know, since back, back in the day when Apollo go, go versus, you know, the no remorse cord, myself and Davey Richards, you know, so maybe, and that was years before Bushi even got to new Japan, you know? So I feel like he should have done his history and maybe checked first before he opened it, but stupid mouth. And then he went in and he said some comment like, oh, that's the piss break for, uh, for Japanese fans because basically saying like the, the, none of these foreign wrestlers who are featured are, you know, are, 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 nobody cares about them, right? I was like, A, nobody goes to pee during the first match, Bushy, <laughs> you friggin' idiot. <laughs> so like, you know, you're wrong and, you're, and obviously you're just jealous that, you know, you're probably in the rumble and, you know, we were out there having an amazing match, not only for Japanese fans who are there, but also fans outside, you know, uh, of Japan and, and how we were basically being ambassadors for that, you know, especially with the Bucks, Red Dragon, you know, uh, Seidel and Ricochet, you know, and myself and Trent, you know, so like it was a very stupid comment that he made and it pissed me off that I'm, I'm kind of holding a bit of a grudge and then also like the first time he his actual first match I think in New Japan in Super Junior he beat me so there's the, there's that too you know so uh, so it, it runs deep that that those comments bothered me and uh, here we are now and I feel like it's it hasn't been settled you know there hasn't been any settlement about it and I haven't really got a chance to really rebuttal it you know or, or talk back to it because there you know we don't haven't really like cross paths much so um if, if there is an opportunity to to cross paths with him I, i'm definitely gonna let him know and maybe show the world that stupid face of his sorry <laughs> i don't think people realize it runs so deep and it was such a beef i just thought it was because he like does the rewind kick and kevin kelly always makes a mark of art that move looks familiar as he then he stole all my moves <laughs> he stole like three moves from me so I'm like, dude, so you, you, a, you, you, I'm a, I'm a piss break wrestler, but obviously you're watching and stealing my <laughs> shit. How does that make any sense? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Somebody help me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what move do you hate the most? And why is it a paradise lock? <laughs> Man. <laughs> I had, I had to go to therapy for that. <laughs> I'm still not sure if I'm ready to talk about it. That'll be our next interview and our follow-up. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. Okay, an easy one. Hopefully it's an easy one. Lawson's or Family Mart? 7-Eleven. All right. 
yeah, 7-Eleven is where it's at. But then if I had to go to Lawson's Family Mart, I th- Lawson's maybe? maybe. I like Lawson's. Lawson's. Yeah, but 7-Eleven is where I'm at. I'm a 7-Eleven again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so when you were teaming with Taguchi, Taguchi was promoting the Rugby World, Rugby World Cup. He'd come out with a rugby ball, so you started to come out with a basketball. Assuming Taguchi beat you in rugby and you beat Taguchi in basketball, what sport would you play as a tiebreaker? Uh, damn, what's something I could win for sure? <laughs> Maybe like baseball. I feel like I'd be a better baseball player than Taguchi. I think so. I think I would. Maybe we'll, we'll see if you can settle that one when you're back in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> as little do I know, probably he's like some kind of college baseball champion or something like Tanahashi or something. <laughs> I'm going to go with baseball for now. Awesome. All right. Uh, I think this is the final question, Rocky. Um, we are wrestle in, like a hotel and in a little comfy place. So imagine you've got a table at wrestle in. What meal are you eating? What drink are you drinking? And what two wrestlers are you bringing along for company? It's a good one. Um, I'm going to eat yakiniku, which is Japanese barbecue. I'm going to drink strong zeros and not remember the next day. Uh, <laughs> and then I am going to bring the Good Brothers because uh-huh. they're going to be the best time. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to remember it the next morning either and then nobody's going to remember it the next day <laughs> uh, I'll wrap things up you can follow Rocky on Twitter at, and Instagram at Azuka Rock you can see him on New Japan Strong on a nearly weekly basis and of course on all New Japan programs on njpwworld.com uh, you can hear him on the Talking Shop podcast with the good brothers Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson you can support Rocky by buying his merch at rockyromeromerch.com there's a Chico Luchador uh, 8x10. Got a new sweater. Look at that. So dope. So There's cool. Chico sure Luchador 8x10 that's discounted from $1,000. It's a bargain. Yeah. I um, think there's masks that are discounted from like a million. So <laughs> He's so generous. Good. So, such yeah. a humble man. That could be the next Bitcoin is is uh, is Chico <laughs> masks. You know? <laughs> Invest uh, now. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it with that. Some uh, Some words of wisdom. Rocky, thanks so much for this, man. I've loved it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.